Russell T. Davis is a producer and he writes screenplays for television. One of those screenplays for he for he, he was a producer for Second Coming, which was a TV program by the BBC. I think it was in the nineties and it has Doctor Who in it. The first Doctor Who of the reboot Christopher Eccleston. The reason why I say that is because like I've said, these actors just reprise their roles time and time again. Because that's what they are, actors. So if you play one role, obviously, you're gonna get hired to do the same role because you did it so well in another movie, even though it's the same character. So in Second Coming, which is clearly a Ben David character born in England, although obviously because of the parallel between King David and Jesus, there are an incredible amount of par parallels. Him, the Second Coming, for instance, you know, that's synonymous with Jesus for the Christians. Um, ben David is another second coming of King David. Um, it's such a beautiful beginning to the story in that he's beloved by all his friends in a certain way. He's just seen an average man and he even protects them in a an attack on a pub where it blows up you know he, sh he proves that he has these powers like a messiah he goes on to um prove that he's got some sort of status within this level of power um as we know within Jesus' story it doesn't matter what you do you're never seen as a good person if you have these things which is throughout history any sort of level above human you you know the human nature will say well you know this person's a hero but time and time again these people are actually not they're they're brought down and, and seen as evil um so to to put it bluntly, Russell T. Davis is an incredible writer and producer. But the way it ends is actually quite satanic because, or it could just be funny, as, as some people say, you know, what's wrong, especially in, in, in TV, what's wrong with like twisting the end, even if it's not scriptural, you know, he probably doesn't believe in Judaism, you know. I think he's, I think he is a Rosicrucian. I think he admits it within his Instagram account, and which is basically a sect of the occult. Um. So he ends the TV show, which is outstanding, especially the way it's acted by him killing himself. Basically, his best friend convinces him that he should kill himself and he eats rat poison. And then the person, the central person who is basically like Satan, even he feels sorry for him at the end. Um, and it, it shook it shook the TV world at the time in, in Britain of how incredible it was. And in itself, that's a wonderful piece of art. Because he's just flipped the story, you know, of the second coming and, you know, and, and he's, you know, he's not a Christian. Why, why wouldn't he play with this? This is just art. He's done it again with Doctor Who. So... This character throughout Doctor Who, within David Tennant's stays at the Tenth Doctor, he was like 
every woman's fantasy. He was a hero. He was great. You know, he was um, likened to a Lion King within within the story. You know, he had Rose. He, he, you know, which is synonymous with Echo. You know, just listen to Echoes by Pink Floyd. It'll tell you that she is a Rose. Um, and then I can't think of a single woman in the country that didn't like David Tennant and his character. And then they bring him back and basically hint that he's gay. And then, you know, you can put it down to the way someone's written the story. What's wrong with that? You know, it's his character, basically. He can do what he likes with it. But at the same time, this character, who is, as I say, definitely a Vishnu character. And just to go back on what I said in a previous video, I don't know who Vishnu is to Jesus. I w it's obvious that he is ultimately a pagan god. So I just went a step further saying that um, if he is a, a pagan god and he is supreme and there is no real creation at the beginning, who's to say who he is? Um, I don't say he is God the Father, um, as in benevolent God that's right in all wrongs. Um, I don't make that assertion. I just hypothesize as to what I'm saying. Clearly, clearly, God is writing this God, as it were, and bringing him down, and but but using him for good. And nobody knows what actually happened in heaven in the fall. If they do, then they are actually angels on this earth. Or they're people like Russell D. Davis who knows exactly what these what's going on. And because he's got hidden texts. Um so I I've actually spoken to this man, I shouldn't say man, to this gentleman on Instagram. I've actually got a screenshot, I'll, I'll share it on on my one of my shorts. And I say in my Instagram. Doctor Who is clearly a Ben David character, and um, I'm going to expose you for what you've done. And he liked my comment. He liked my comment. And um, like I say, I haven't got a problem with political expression or art expression. It's just no other god gets this level of criticism. In the way that Wokery does to this particular God and its connection to Ben David. Ben David is not like the way he portrays. And I believe he does it on purpose to put forward his political agenda. Obviously. Um, the character of Cal within the Netflix series about education, who is now playing Doctor Who. That's synonymous with what I'm saying, that they're reprising their roles. Cal being, just spelt with a C, but Cal Key is Cal, Cal Key, but Cal means time. And this is where we get Cal L from Superman. Um, L being the na a na another name for God within Judaism. So you've got like Time God, Time Lord. And then, um, and like I say, everyone has a right to choose their sexuality. That's fine. Everyone has a right to portray it within film, cinema. Please do it. Please do it. But, but when... When it's obvious that there's something else going on here, that they actually, these screenwriters and producers, they want to portray this character in a basically satanic way. Um, 
so if it if this character is Vishnu and one of the avatars is Kalki or um, Krishna Hermes, this Hermes, for instance, had female lovers throughout his entire history of what I've read. Obviously, we don't know what actually happened, but this is what the Greeks and Romans say. He definitely had a lover of Venus, who's by all means the most beautiful of gods to, to them. And then goddesses, and then there's Echo. He had a child with her. But we know that's where we get the word pansexual, because he was, for all intents and purposes, um, labelled as that. But I cannot see anything that goes into that detail. Obviously, I've not read enough about this. Um, there are so many texts that speak of him. Um, I can't see anything that's homosexual, to be honest with you. Um, but I can see that he is portrayed with with things that aren't even right in today's society. Um, of which the occult uses him for that reason. You know, for hundreds and hundreds of years, men and women would go to literal caves and just pray for a spirit to come to them so they could just have sex. And that's why he is that entity, a sex, I say sex god, a fertility god. Um, so for Russell T. Davis to make a point that we hint at David Tennant's character being you know, no longer straight, even though he's had children in the series, and then we have, um, and they've all been with women. And then we have, and I don't have a problem with um, um, the 13th Doctor having that persuasion of, of, of lesbian and base, basically with the Indian um, character. Because obviously, what's wrong with that? You know, um, Loki could transfer transfer himself into a female and that's very likely to have happened hence where we get these pansexual things um you know um and there's nothing wrong with saying that because it, it's right there in all the writings but i haven't seen the writings where he's transferred his gender and then he's had a lesbian affair i haven't seen that there but it's obvious that you can say he is pansexual, so that's fine. But the link to Ben David, that's the issue. The link to the Lion King, the link to the prodigal son, the link to um, Superman. Superman's portrayal to me by Christopher Reeve and Henry Cavill is beautiful. It's a beautiful love story. And it, it's got every level going for everyone watching, you know. Romance, intrigue, play, um, teasing, um, ridicule. But but even by Lois Lane, obviously, being, you know, mocked for being Clark Kent and silly and stupid, but then ultimately being her hero. That's, to me of my generation is is a great portrayal of what what's happening in the stories of of Ben David and Judaism and Christianity right if it was just that doctor who and second coming like again what's wrong with that right if you have a different political persuasion you have every right in under freedom of speech to portray whatever you like about that character. That character is your character, basically. There's no copyright. No one's going to sue you for it. But what if this character is real? What if Ben David is real and he is here and they're doing it myriad, myriad of times? Um, 
so an incredible amount of TV shows, like I say, are doing things in this way. Um, and I have found throughout the mainstream media that they do this as well, knowing full well what they're doing. Um, so to talk about wokery and the political landscape of today, I would give an example of Rishi Sunak because, believe it or not, Rishi Sunak, our Prime Minister, is linked to this character because of his Britishness and his Indianness. You even see this within the fitting image where he's um he's given um he's made out to be like Edward Scissorhands. Right. Now there are also other very, very striking examples within the media of basically going against what one would assume this man to be, which is handsome, eloquent, righteous, but, and, and you know, at the start of his career, women, well, they were calling him Dishy Rishi, you know, they, they loved him so much, and he was just a dream to a lot of girls and women. You know, he's actually only one year younger than me, I think, 44, 43. So, um, and then you just look at the media and how they they portray him. Like, you, you know, you, you look how they, 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 they insinuate he's gay. They, they, they do this to Indian men. They pull them down, uh, with especially within Britain. They'll insinuate things about his sexuality. Um... And like I say, even gay men like Russell D. Davis will do this. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, uh, gay men accusing other men of being gay. That That's happened throughout history. Um, you know, even um, Boy George tried to out um, Robbie Williams and, and, and the media tried to do it to Jason Donovan. It's a well-established part of British society, unfortunately, um, that these people can defend themselves. You know, um, I think Jason Donovan took the papers to court for that. And obviously, Robbie Williams' sex life is his own business. But he's married and he's got children. Um if it was just his sexuality, I, I don't think in today's climate it's an issue per se, because it's 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 your character, as it were. You know, you can say that about Jesus even, and and you're allowed to do that, and it has been done, and it's laughed about on social media. Um, it doesn't mean to say, you know, he was that way. As in, he was actually a virgin. So, why is Doctor Who's character, the new Doctor Who, just gay? I haven't watched all of it, but why are they doing that? And if he is Vishnu, if he is Kagyu, why? And then... Um, it's a political agenda. It, it it's they just to be honest with you, just mocking him. They're just mocking him. And all I want to do is tell you that this producer and and many others, especially within the BBC, keep doing it. Um, and Hollywood does it. Flash Gordon, the new Flash film. Um, the one where we have Batman and we have allusions to Back to the Future. We have Superman within it. Everything you can think of that I'm speaking of within the new Flash Gordon movie that came out a year ago. 
and it got completely ironically panned because this character even though lots of it was great the character is the most camp and wet pathetic character you've ever seen in your life and he doesn't even kiss the girl at the end iris who's just you know another god of the rainbow like hermes pan goddess and then kiss her um and i said to my friend when i watched it like i don't have a problem with how a writer has portrayed a character obviously that didn't actually you know that that most people would say didn't exist but what's wrong with that nothing wrong with that the fact is right is that sensitive people like a ben david character are not weak are not are not gay are not are not um, asexual are not um they are the paragon of sexual um, when the poets of of the um, 1800s were writing poetry like King David, they were superstars. You know, they they were literal womanizers. Like By Byron had a club foot, and yet he was like a womanizer to our society. Um, Leonard Cohen, who was actually a Jew follower of Judaism, he was a womanizer. I mean, he wrote poetry, a lot of it was just like melancholic poetry, but he had sex with like just the most incredible women, um, like him within the Chelsea Hotel, and he speaks about it in his lyrics, um, and the whole audience goes crazy because it's liberating and it's beautiful. Obviously, he speaks about David, King David, in Hallelujah, in his song Hallelujah, and we've lost that obviously through wokery. We've lost this connection to why sensitive men like like Ben David, like David, who is actually personified as the moon, are in fact the most sexual men in history quite literally i mean king david had several wives like but it's famous throughout the stories of king david he was an absolute lover and a fighter and his son is 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 down there with the most sexual man that ever existed he i think he had what was it like Two, three hundred wives and seven hundred concubines. So it's very likely that there are millions and millions and millions of people that are alive because of just one man, Solomon, King Solomon. Um, other people who have done that are like are people like Genghis Khan, who is obviously never cite, cited as being a sensitive person. But, you know, Genghis Khan did, in fact, father hundreds and hundreds of millions of people to this day in the world. Um, so I don't want anyone to say that that's wrong, that he had. You know, I don't think it would. I don't think even anyone's going to say that, you know, a, a king, a king's duty is not actually just to, um, you know, in like today's world, we don't do this anymore. Obviously, you just have one wife you're a man and and that's that's what that is right and in orderly but in the ancient world their the role wasn't just to be a king this is accepted you know they they did actually have to father children and 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 keep their society going that's that's one of the reasons they did it um and i get the the song of solomon the song of solomon I just want to portray how sensitive people, like I say, within um, the TV shows and uh, films and Hollywood, we know there's been a decline 
within script writing and wokery and it's largely because of this what i've learned in psychology and my own life is that and also people with mental illness you know mental illness people with mental illnesses actually tend to have a, what's called hypersexuality people like tracy emin and i say poets songwriters you know tracy emin you know famous artist from the uk who who did incredible art installations where she just she took in like a messy bed where she's like writes all the sexual lovers that she's had celebrated throughout the world you know sylvia plath you know, this happens with women obviously was just the most sexual woman you, you've ever read about you read about the bell jar um it is such a cliche within my lifetime that people with mental illnesses are actually just like great lovers easy lovers as it were those who who are liberated and free and have no bounds upon it um done the right way a lot of the time you know these people aren't breaking the law and then from what i've found that the famous writers in my own life and then I see this decline of how we view men and then you know obviously like I say there are great scripts that are coming out that, that talk about the great side believe it or not even Fraser does it Fraser I shouldn't be so emotional about it I know but believe it or not Fraser's reboot has um, Rodney in it, his character. Rodney, I've forgotten his name now. But the character who played Rodney in Only Fools and Horses. Um, and in one of the first episodes, he talks to Lil Lilith. And Lilith is... Um, what some scholars say and it isn't mainstream that adam had a first lover and she didn't want to be with him and she became a demonic force um and there is a reference to someone called Lilith in i think one of the psalms or one and uh, and that's more or less it within the bible but within other texts you, you can read about her and then the occult is obsessed by her um so he speaks to lilith like don't you remember me in the garden with the snake and she's like no no i don't remember you oh no, you don't remember me and then time and time again like the the character just um talks about king david is you know it is him and it's king david and it's adam and it's ben david right and, and then you know i haven't really seen a lot of fraser but i do believe that fraser's character may be a play on loki but in a very very subtle and clever way um and just to talk about only fools and horses like which is just a classic, classic program throughout the entire world. Don't need to build it up, right? But did you know that in a episode called The Lesser Watch, where Rodney and Del Boy find out that an antique watch is worth, you know, like a million pounds or so, that Rodney's character admits that he is a messenger from god like david like king david next to the garage he is at the garage like a garage and he, he admits it to del boy and then we have a scene within only fools and horses where we just have the tribulation the apocalypse and it's just fast forwards in, into time literally into time 
and we have Rodney and Dull Boy, and we basically have the Antichrist. And they're both brothers. And they are, in fact, half brothers that we discover at the end. And they have the same mother, but not the same father. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail about why they've done this. It's, it's controversial. You know, there aren't going to be too many people that actually check this out. I don't believe there'll be any. Um, but you can just look at the theme tune, really, and the end credits. Because that's just an easy thing to do. And it talks about um, David Bowie Alpes. And at the end it talks about Hockey Street. Well, it, it one of the final episodes we discover how significant David Bowie is and how that relates to a life on Mars and his character of playing King David with the red hair and portrayed as being very fair white skin. Um, then we have a reference to the Hollow Crown and Henry Bolingbrook. And this is very, very significant. You see a poster on the wall uh, in one of the in one of the episodes where they, where they have a the final episodes where they have a David Bowie tribute band. It could actually be, the, you know, it's one of the final episodes, and and you see it, you see this reference, and it's because within the Hollow Crown. We have uh, portrayed within on the BBC. It, it's about Shakespeare's portrayal of I think it's Richard the Second, and how um, there is a battle between Henry Bolingbroke, and he ultimately becomes the new king, and. I could do another video about that. It's quite complicated. But um it's it's symbolic of of a new Ben David and, and how his his kingship will be. Um it even references how because like um how is a shortened version of Henry. Um, so there's a movie called Prince Hal, which I believe is a reference to an archetype of King David, Ben David's character. Um, like I say, it's funny. He doesn't like Henry Falls and Horses. He, he doesn't laugh at that, you know, the classic Batman and Robin theme scene, which is not synchronous. This is done on purpose, Batman and Robin. Um, just time and time again, just time and time again, if you really, really watch the shows, you'll see that the thousands and thousands of biblical references. And Rodney's character is ultimately a Ben David character in that he's like unemployed. You know, Rodney has to get him a job. He's quite unsuccessful with women. He ends up with Cassandra and then they have a baby. Uh, but the uh, there's a scene with a, with a lift where it breaks down and Del Boy, his brother, is so loving and caring. But you see, Cassandra and Rodney have a miscarriage. And this is completely symbolic of King David. Because King David was an adulterer with Bathsheba. Ultimately, he is God's beloved favourite. You know... If Bathsheba was Eve, it was meant to be. He was meant to be with this woman. But he did an unspeakable crime. 
in committing adultery with her. Um, of which God punished them both by, ha by having their first child having a mis be a miscarriage. You see this throughout hundreds and hundreds of movies where a Ben David character, King David character, will have a miscarriage. You see it with Rodney. No one. No, I've spoken to friends. No one looks into it. Right? No body looks into it. I've revealed who Edmund Blackadder is. I've revealed now how Nicholas Lindhurst is now, you know, he does this character within um, Fraser. I haven't looked into Goodnight Sweetheart, but there's a clear case of time travel there. But um, we even have David Beckham appear in Only Fools and Horses in the Comic Relief episode. And a lot of the Comet Relief episodes are written by um, Richard Curtis. And like I say, Richard Curtis just keeps on repeating these mock mockeries and puns. And it is just comedy at the end of the day. But he keeps doing it. You watch how many Comet Relief episodes which Richard Curtis does. Rowan Atkinson pl plays, forgive me for misspeaking, Please, Doctor Who in Comet Relief. And it's funny, it's funny. They, but they're just mocking him throughout. He's the hero. He's the hero. That, that's the centerpiece of what he's doing. Because Richard Curtis is one of the most celebrated writers in the world. He's won so many awards. I, I love Notting Hill and I love the film Yesterday. Of which, at the end, it says, "Oh, what if Harry Potter didn't exist?" And it, you know, and he's called within yesterday the Messiah at some point by his uh, manager. Are you, are you the Messiah? And by the way, just like I say with Rishi Sunak, they try to change everything about him. By the way, you don't look right. You've got to change all this, she says. Um, you know. Um, the, the actor who plays it, 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 it is very funny, you know, he's got a dry humour as well, you know, well, it, it, it's very, you know, there's Ed Sheeran pops up, and Ed Sheeran does in fact play a Harry Potter character within his music, I don't want to go too much into that, but, you know, he, he does play the Joker and the Queen, and the Joker being Hermes, Quite, quite obviously, um, the Queen being Taylor Swift. Now, what what is it about modern culture? The falling away of um, of most of people under thirty five. Into what they ever, whatever they want to do within the law, they can. If they want to mock, if they want to turn away, if they want to do what they want to do, that's fine. Totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Who can judge that? As long as they're expressing themselves. In fact, that's as a psychologist, I believe that being a young person is actually hard. What you know? It's not my theory that children rebel in order to break the status quo and show one theory and show a new way of thinking you know and um, it goes hand in hand with what we like to think of as, as a progression in society just like we did in the 60s we don't want people taking this to war we want more love, we want more romance, peace not war. Um, we want more liberation, we don't want racism, we don't want um, apartheid, we don't want women being persecuted. And, and we like to think of it as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, like a graph that goes up, that 
society is getting better and better and better. But what if people are lying in order to put their agenda forward throughout hundreds and hundreds of movies, TV, poetry, even poetry? The poetry of today is largely, within Britain anyway, largely satanic and done so on purpose. Um, there's a reason why, you know, I mean, people aren't stupid you know that they, they know that this is down to money it, it is largely in the bible down to money and when i say money you know without being shallow there are very very few percentage very few in the hundreds of largely men they are mostly all men who have literally bankrolled this falling away an agenda and I don't want to typecast or get into trouble with people who are real people within society that have a right to defend themselves I, I'm saying nothing that is not a judgment based upon truth and even like i say russell t davis liking my own instagram comment you know um and i've said he can write whatever he writes within the uk as long as it's not illegal you can, you can do that and i don't know his real political persuasion i don't know his real religious beliefs um, all I can do is make assertions based upon my own judgments and my own freedom of speech. And like I say, expose what I believe to be the truth. Um, there are good people within Hollywood and there are amazing people within the BBC. Obviously. But. That's all I want to say for now is. Um, I, I don't even believe it's it's genuine I just don't believe it's genuine freedom of expression in art anymore um, you know the, the audience figures for Doctor Who have gone down so much and, and it's well established that this is men and women all over the world saying that their beloved programme is no longer watchable because of wokery and as a person of color they can't even get rosa parks right you know as someone who believes in in women and equality you can't even get a character about women in 13th doctor right you know they can't even get um the first black actor to play doctor who right and i'm not black it's not necessarily my right to say what is but all this imagery of him you know dressed up with an afro and uh, and look it looks like black exploitation to me it, it it doesn't look like true reality it looks like russell tieris is a white man who's just portraying a black character that's i mean obviously the, the new doctor is 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 consensually portraying this character like, that's just that's just how it looks to me you know, my family were from South Africa. But I have a right to say that. I don't think that that is how I see the world. I see it as faux liberation. I do. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why. You know, we have an Indian character within the Thirteenth Doctor, and she just has to be gay, and she just has to be. You know, the way she, even even within Doctor Who's 10th Doctor, David Tennant, you know, we had um, uh, one of the characters, obviously, was black. And he was just submissive all the way through. All the way through. David Tennant's character was literally lecturing him and having a go at him. Most of the time. Like, like saying he wasn't worthy. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's right. 
Um, the Rosa Parks episode was was massively panned by a lot of critics. It 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 wasn't accurate in any way. Um, you know, Rosa Parks, who famously didn't want to sit at the back of the bus, you know, her, she she was like me. Um, she, she had ancestry from one from two cultures, from two ethnicities. So I'm Anglo-Indian, and, and she was biracial. And that's perfectly fine to say that you know she's a black character, like just like um, Bob Molly, who is a black man, was a black man, but he was like Obama, biracial as well. And I, as someone with a dual heritage, I'm just anxious of the fact that it, it if you don't mention what these own people what these what these characters and, and men and women actually said about their own FFC and life which is synonymous with what I'm saying about what the Bible says about Benedict what the Jews say about Benedict what what they say about King David what we know to be historically accurate and no one was there during you know Hermes's uh supposed life and like I say most people wouldn't even say he existed but within these poems and and, and stories that it, it, it doesn't even add up to what they're saying um, because if you go to the Rosicrucian website which I've done before and you have a look at their textbooks of which like I say I don't know if Russell T. Rev is a Rosicrucian but Jean Roddenberry was. That that's an historical fact. He was a Rosicrucian. And I have never been involved in that society. And but I'm just going on their website. And it it literally has books that say that their philosophy is the tree of life. You can't make it up. Right? Literally from the Bible. Please go and check it out. And, you know, I'm not saying it's, uh, I'm not saying that that's evil. I'm not saying that's bad. They're saying it. They're saying it. It's like, we are the tree of good and evil. We are part of the fall of man. That, 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 that's them saying it. So there's a bit of humour for you. Um... Lucky Street is a direct reference to Hermes and the Jack of Trades, Jack of All Trades, like, you know. That, that's probably why Del Boy and Rodney are a Jack of All Trades, like, you know, try to send the train. It's, it's, it's a joke, right? And then you've got references to South Africa with, like, Nelson Mandela House. And just, I don't think anyone's really watched all the series. You know, there's, there's, there's several, there's like five or six Christmas movies that show out over an hour long and there's even a two-part movie that I've, that I've watched um, the, I'm correcting quite a lot of what I said in the previous video about how it's okay to be who you want to be but And it's all right to have freedom of speech within TV, cinema, and poetry, everything. But if it's just not accurate and it's not good script writing, everyone is, says that it's woke. Please, let's just have a change for that. Let's let's see a little bit deeper. And and, and if there is no agenda to to like mock this person on purpose, well then, you know, listen to criticism. Because if you're criticising him, then I can criticise you. And I wouldn't write it that way. Uh, the, the decline is what people are upset about. Is that we had just the most incredible reboot ever with Doctor Who. You know, Rose's character. You know, it was a direct reference to Echo. And it's just so touching and beautiful. You know, he ends up a version of him living with her. Um, 
I hope her character comes back. I'm going to watch some of the latest episodes and just see if I'm wrong. Um, you know, you even have um, one of the main evil characters in The Matrix coming back. In that Christmas episode that Russell T. Ravers wrote, um, I've forgotten his name, Doogie Howser, the one from How I Met Your Mother. Um, you know, David Tennant was in Harry Potter, once again playing a malevolent character, um, just like he does in Good Omen. But when I say malevolent, I mean ultimately he redeems himself, just like. Like as Azel's character does within Good Omens, anyway. Because Azel is where we get the word scapegoat from, which is literally Ben David's sacrificial right to be this sacrifice. This is what they're ultimately doing. And from my point of view, is he is symbolically being sacrificed in the most public of ways. And they're doing it with humour, and they're doing it with intelligence, but they're also doing it with wokery, and they're also doing it in a malevolent way, that if you piece it all together, ultimately ends up being um, what has to be, unfortunately, in the... In the In the um, as the blood, like a guilt sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, um, with an atonement, Ben David is in fact a mirror to Great Britain and America, and that by ultimately sacrificing him, <clears throat> I don't know if it's literal. Because um, within Revelation, we learn that, and within the Bible, we learn that there are, in fact, 194 nations that go against this man. And he wins. And he doesn't, and it doesn't state exactly how he does it. But believe it or not, within the United Nations, there are 193 nations. And if Palestine joins, that will be 194. And so, and within the suffering servant, this is completely illustrated in that, although he is a beloved character within his friends, he is in fact the most hated man within the elite, and kings and queens, it says, of all time. Well, on a parallel with Jesus, so, and Ben David, Ben Joseph, he was obviously an incredibly hated man throughout the establishment. And I'm glad that I'm ending with the fact that there is there are these three messiahs and they are hated within the establishment, within Hollywood even. Um, you know, obviously Jesus just, you know, the greatest man that ever lived and God and that he he you know he sacrificed for all our sins and that what he did obviously you know is portrayed in such a beautiful way throughout Hollywood um, and throughout the whole of the world especially in the West and in Israel and Middle East but you know they wouldn't they wouldn't dare go to some lengths to attack him in the way that they do in with Ben David character and Ben Joseph if these people are real people in the world which I do believe they are and I do believe Ben Joseph is President Trump ex-President Trump and the Jews are have said that he is the chosen one he says President, next president Trump does go around saying I am the chosen one. He did allow Jerusalem to be recognised as the capital of Israel. Uh, this is the most controversial thing 
I can say in a video in today's climate with him just being ultimately found guilty of what is basically adultery within the court system in America and I've said it before I don't know if it's him but it just seems to be aligned with what my theory says and ultimately if he is a parallel a complete parallel even though he is the the pyramid that, that goes on top and Ben David is a pyramid that goes below with Ben David being hidden the spiritual side with Ben Jabez being visible the political side um, there aren't many people that are hated across the world as him and loved by an incredible amount of people as well but um, you know there are many people that can say more adequate than me about how it's a double standard um, ultimately ultimately one can't prove anything through what I'm saying if no one looks into it about Ben David but President, ex-President Trump one can make so many assertions that he is largely an innocent man sinful just like all men are but largely an innocent man who is simply sticking up for America and ultimately Great Britain and the Jews and the whole human race even and I don't align my views with uh, his views on immigration to the point where I don't know what he's going to do if he's president but you know having Farage as a right hand man is not a good thing if you're watching ever going to watch which you won't Donald Trump do not align with Nigel Farage do not attack Muslims they are our brothers it's completely scriptural that any such war or agenda like that is not what God wants with Ben David being the Messiah in all seven major religions this is not what he wants according to what I read this is completely against what most people on earth want you know it, Steve Bannon who might be in government with him if he, if he is elected says that they're going to just kick out people that have come into the country and, and just send them on planes and that's something that just won't happen it will not happen the people will not allow that to happen even though I believe one has to protect their borders Biden has clearly destroyed America in that way and letting you know that this is an agenda that obviously is well well talked about now that Tony Blair and Gordon Brown and, and people on the left do on purpose to let in voters who are largely of black and brown color skin who 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 because of their political persuasions will vote Democrat or Labour because it because it's just well healed evidence that they are getting political and social and, and, and economic advantages for doing that in the short term um, but like I say you can't blame the water for the flood you have to look at your own sins as to what the Bible says why it happened Manessa has its own reasons for being sinful and it largely goes back to what the Bible says is slavery so this dovetails with the Book of Mormon and ultimately what the political upheaval is in America and why the left is basically doing God's will in order to bring in 
tribulation. So it's our punishment, their punishment, because they won't see what the Bible says and what is actually an historical fact. So within the Bible, um, God says that his people will go into slavery, the Jews, or, or basically, as we know today, the ancient Hebrews, into slavery for upwards of uh, 472 years, I believe it is. And under President Trump's um, presidency, he he signed an act and recognised that the transatlantic slave trade, uh, slave trade did in fact go on for, this is not an approximate figure, 472 years, you can find it online. Uh, you can't make that up. So that's how long it lasted for in American law, and that's how long it lasted. It will last in the Bible. And to make it clear, the Bible makes it makes it very clear that those ancient Hebrews went into slavery because of their own idol worship and because of their own sins, and that the problem with slavery was not in fact that they should go into slavery, it was God who put them into slavery, but it was the way they were treated. That's what the Bible says. If you treat my people harshly within their time period, allotted, literal allotted period of slavery, if you do, what the, and the unspeakable things they did to them, and you know, hundreds of thousands of people died just on the boats going to America and you know, Bob Marley mythologizes this within his writings and you know, songs like, you know, Buffalo Soldier and and how black people within America are not all related to these ancient Hebrews who, who were in the kingdom of Judah, believe it or not. That's the main country that, that they, uh, they took a lot of the slaves from in Africa. And it's now another, it's now a modern African country, but it was known as the kingdom of Judah because after the fall of ancient Israel these um, Hebrews um, who many colloquially would say the Jews but that's obviously not necessarily technically accurate they were they did have they did practice Judaism but obviously there's a set between modern Jews who for all intents and purposes many people would say white they're not all white you know there are Indians there and brown people there and black people but, but what people would say is white and then who are Ashkenazi Jews who largely originate from what is now modern day Ukraine and that's just an historical fact uh, obviously, you know, a lot of these people came from, Jews came from Russia and Poland and America. And and, you, and, and, and and Jews are now, unfortunately, because they are being persecuted, returning back home. They're beginning to. And this is exactly what the Bible says, is that the ten lost tribes, the Jews of those ten lost tribes, unfortunately, must go back home to avoid persecution. And if... Great Britain has admitted that reparations have to be paid for the impact of slavery. And most young people and, and scholars would, would now admit that this is, in fact, an, a psychological, emotional, spiritual obligation to right the wrongs of, unfortunately, the Bible says that God will put the judgment upon five to I think it's five to six or seven generations after that event so that is why even though we we ourselves uh, our families like my family being from Britain probably did these things you know uh, I don't think they did but were part of that empire um, we are unfortunately responsible for it and even though Great Britain is no longer a rich country, we have to pay for it. Because in in Africa and in, in like places like the Caribbean, 
they are still suffering. The, the, the DNA, they say, has actually been changed because of the suffering of slavery. You know, this is just a well-established fact now within many spheres of society. But, no, I believe even, even though I don't like President Biden, I believe that he would, probably is, you know, is going to bring in reparations, or it, it even started it, if he gets re-elected. But, you know, there's so many good things that I respect Pres President Trump, if he gets elected, to do, that this is not me saying this, this is the Bible, this is what God says, and this is what um, the Book of Mormon ultim ultimately says, is that um, within the within the Bible it says that there'll be uh, two sticks, one of them the stick of Judah, one of them a stick of Joseph, and this has been interpreted to mean the stick of Judah is the Bible, and the and the the stick of Joseph is in fact the Book of Mormon. And you put these two together, it says, this is what the Messiah ben David does, he puts them two together. Because he can see that there is this historical, psychological, symmetrical, in every way, connection to Bible, Ephraim, Mercer. And one only has to do research that goes beyond the lies that they say about the Book of Mormon. And how the Mormons believe that within doctrines and covenants 113, when I say Mormons, I believe that isn't accurate because I don't believe a lot of Mormons believe this, but this is what Joseph Smith said, that the Messiah ben David will come through Ephraim, but with an ancestor, Jesse. And it's there's, there's, there's many prophecies within the Book of Mormon, which I say are just parallels to America. In fact, that's, that's probably one of the main reasons it's written, is an example of what happened in the ancient past and what is happening now. And why it's so important to understand the history of America and ultimately how it saves Israel, ultimately how it's always been there for all people, but just like the Bible hints at has fallen away from God, it has obviously become a lot more moral than it used to be, and there isn't a man or woman on this planet that disagrees with that. Um Ultimately, I have ancestors in America, historical ancestors. I have a large connection to America. Um, I believe in America. I believe in the American people. And I write about it in my songs. Uh, I'll do more videos about how impassioned I am towards everything to do with American culture and how it's influenced my life and the world. And I am a believer in ultimately the West and how it is under attack, even from its own people. That's historically accurate within the Bible. Um, without holding up America, without showing respect to the West, one will only have authoritarianism, lies, and ultimately a new world order that is not, is not a walk in the park. It is a brave new world. It is 984. It is everything everything that the left says is not it is persecution of women like within her means 
Tale. It is persecution of black people like within The Handmaid's Tale. It is a persecution of sex, just like in Brave New World. It is a persecution of um, all, all major faiths except for paganism. It is a rejection of love, just like in Brave New World. Um, it is it is drug hypnotherapy, even of children. It is sacrifice. It is a scientific and political dictatorship that unfortunately is basically almost here. And everyone, everyone has a different way of talking about it. I'm simply talking about and stating facts about TV, film, cinema, poetry, um, my views upon the world and where these people lie in the Bible. And I've made some assertions that aren't correct about, you know, I don't know who the cherub in Heron Raphael Lucifer is. I don't know how that relates to uh, Vishnu. He isn't. As far as I'm aware, he isn't. He isn't. God is telling me he isn't that angel. That isn't true. What I believe is true is that ultimately Vishnu is a god of this universe. And that there is, in fact, a benevolent God who is master of them all. And Jesus was, in fact, the human that came to redeem us all. That is what I believe is true. And that is love and that is sacrifice. And the analogy of the stone, Vishnu, thinking about it for a while, of which that was inspired from God, but obviously my human side, my imperfect human side is, is, is made an assertion that isn't true yeah, about the angel that fell. Because it quite obviously is, in my mind now, is coal. Coal was that stone that was a planet that became conscious just like the earth and then gave birth to Brahma and then reality, our universe. And just to end on something historical, which again is controversial, you know, I've, I've been quite controversial in this video, but it's just an accepted fact that, um, that in the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo painted God, who we say, who the Christian Catholics say is God, most of the Christian world says God, touching Adam's hand. And that's one of the most famous paintings of all time. But the Masons don't believe that is God. That, unfortunately, portrayed as a white man with a beard in Masonry is, in fact, a God holding a set square. And he's holding a set square over the universe because that is Kronos. That's where we get it from. And I believe, and I'm not 100% obviously, I wasn't, I'm not a Catholic, is that that is in fact a betrayal of Kronos and Adam right there in the Sistine Chapel. Um, and just just to be aware, just so that people are aware this is not my these are not my ideas this is just backed up by evidence that's all i can do is back it up with evidence um please can you comment in the comments below you know, on my videos uh, like or dislike my videos and if you agree with what i'm saying please show support if you disagree Please debate with me. 
Um, I know it's a channel largely for songs and my music, but I'm going to see John Lydon soon, uh, a singer, of, you know, lead singer of Sex Pistols. So I am a firm believer in music, punk rock, uh, the identity of politics and how it is in a fun way, basically, but how it relates to the whole of society. And he says things much more eloquent than me, obviously. Um, he is a superstar. I want to learn a lot from him. And I wish I had his, like, you know, attitude and, and, and way of talking in that he's always witty and funny. And I can be like that, but he's witty and funny and sarcastic and, and does it in a, in a really fun way. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, I know it's going to be good. Um, I may even meet him, which would be incredible. Um, and just like the character of Ben David, even though he speaks of anarchy in the UK and, you know, and God save the Queen is ironic, just like Ben David's character and what I believe in, in, in is the truth, is that this is actually just art. Going full circle is art. He is a full patriot. He's a full believer in love. You know, he was an incredible, man, still is, a gentleman, just like Liam Gallagher, absolute gentleman uh, in his later age and has personified that within British culture as being an intellectual. And, and, and you know, none of, none of punk rock was about actually starting a real riot. It was about political and social change for the better. And that's all I want to do, is bring people together, bring people on left and right, black, white, male, female, together, just as an inquiry into truth. And I do it in a, in a controversial way, not because I mean to, that is just that is just my manner and my personality because that is just who I am and I'm proud of who I am and um, like I say, I want to put some real Bible verses and scripture into the next video, I promised it for a while but I'm going to do it tomorrow.